Greetings, Curtis and Alex. It's so good to be able to stop by and just send you something extra today. I wanted to be able to address more specifically the idea of the review of the literature. As you know, the most probably the most important starting place, really the focal point, is the thesis statement that you develop. But then after that, it's all about the research needed to be able to ultimately compose a review of the literature, which will be the research background for uh, everything else that you will then be doing writing the chapters of your master's thesis. So since we are addressing that, moving into that in uh, module two, I wanted to be able to just send you a little bit of extra information about the literature review. This comes from our master's thesis manual by way of definition. So let me review that for you. Uh, in terms of the, the review of the literature, it is designed to enable you to grasp an area of significant theological knowledge by demonstrating bibliographic control of the area. And what does that mean? Bibliographic control means that you have been thoroughly searching the relevant literature and are kind of you have become familiar with it. You've become maybe a little bit comfortable with it. Uh, so much so that now as you continue to research, you find yourself encountering the same ideas again. And so you're thinking, I wonder if there's really much more that I can gain from this research. It's bibliographic control in that sense. Uh, it enables you to articulate the, the development of scholarly dialogue or progress up to the contribution of your master's thesis. So you want to be able to basically describe your research road, your research journey that has really led to your, your uh, thesis statement, but also then will form the background for the chapters that you will write coming up uh, next semester. It's also uh, intended to identify a specific research question that uh, constitutes a gap or an inadequacy or a flaw in the scholarly literature. Now, in my mind, that, that, that key research question may, uh, may represent some kind of a research gap, but it also may, in our context, it may represent a research question that you just find yourself drawn to, that you believe is uh, important for you to explore. If there is a an element of inspiration, of Holy Spirit discernment when it comes to that point. But ultimately, you are looking for a specific research question that you will then begin to develop a, a, a defense of, a, an argument for a specific side of that question or aspect of that question. The uh, review of the literature shows an overall comprehension uh, and also provides the research background for your thesis. If you've done a really good job and you're still, you all are, you know, you're just kind of still working at the beginning of this process. But ultimately, I think a review of the literature should basically be a kind of a tool. You end up unpacking it when it comes to the chapters of your master's thesis, where you are developing arguments in favor of your claim, etc. Uh, remember that the review of the literature is not a collage of quotations or an annotated bibliography. You know, sometimes you can fall into that when writing a research paper where you, you get some great sources and you want to, you want to demonstrate your, your facility with those uh, sources. And so you just kind of, you, you give uh, one quotation after another. Uh, and to be honest, uh, uh, comprehension is not demonstrated by your ability to quote. Comprehension is demonstrated by your ability to, uh, to paraphrase, to summarize, to write a, a concluding sentence about. And so your, your comprehension of the area, it's not that the lit review is your commentary on the literature, it's your report of the literature. But in the process, you're demonstrating your comprehension of what it is that you have uh, discovered. And the Lit Review presents research in a logical order designed to show how the thesis statement was developed, how it will be supported. So you think in terms of you, you're reading, you're taking notes, 
ultimately the review of the literature is going to report all your relevant research. You know, some of the things you read, took notes on, you may discover is not really that relevant. Other things are more relevant, so you're going to report on that research, but you're going to do it in a logical order, uh, which may change depending on your, on your topic, etc. It may be chronological, it may be topical, quite often topical, it may be general to specific, which also works. Uh, whatever order you end up deciding on, that's the way you will organize your notes, and you will indicate your, your outline in that sense with subheads under the review of the literature. So it's really a, a way of just kind of, of uh, personally reviewing the, the work that you have done and then begin to compose a, a research that reflects that well. You're not describing, it's not autobiographical. Of course, you know not to use first person, etc. You're not describing, you know, and then I went into the library and I looked up. You know, it, that, that happens occasionally and you want to say, you know, this is a report of the literature, of the research of literature. And so uh, it's okay to, it's okay to offer conclusions at the end of a section. Uh, but this is not your commentary yet. You'll do plenty of that in the chapters of, of your master's thesis. So just as a rule of thumb, if you're like me, you kind of like oh, some guidance that may be helpful when you start to write. The review of the literature usually is about 8 to 12 pages long. The length depends on how focused your research topic is. The broader the, the topic, the longer it takes to provide background for it. Uh, the more narrow the topic, the, m the more quickly you can do that. So it's usually about 8 to 12 pages. Rule of thumb. If you, if you give me four pages, you know, I'm going to say, you know, you, could, you need to do a little bit more work in terms of your research or in terms of how you're reporting your research. Uh, if you give me tw 20 pages, I'm going to say, you know, that's what we need for a doctoral dissertation. I think you can do a great job with a master's thesis and not have 20 pages of uh, lit review. Uh, so again, your review of the literature is going to show an outline of your research, some logical order that's relevant to what it is that you are doing. Includes an introduction and a conclusion and a summary. So I think at the very least they provide transitional sentences along the way that uh, make it easy to read, to follow your, your research, to follow your reasoning. But I think it's also a very important way that you demonstrate comprehension when it comes to your, your research. Uh, the review of the literature is really the focus of the master's thesis chapter, chapter one. Chapter one is the introduction. We are working toward the development of your chapter one, quite frankly. So it's the biggest piece. Uh, as you know, it's, it's the presentation of the relevant research in a logical order. The master's thesis uh, usually ends up being 15,000 to 20,000. I'm, I'm shooting way out into the end of the next semester for you. But as a rule of thumb, about 50 to 60 pages as opposed to, you know, a dissertation is going to be you know, 200 pages maybe. So the master's thesis chapter one, which is the introduction, usually ends up about 3,500 to 6,000, I think 12 to 20 pages. But if so, then you can see that the literature review is usually about 25 to 3,500 words, 8 to 12 pages. So it's the biggest piece of chapter one, but it's because it is, it is uh, describing, it's setting the background for everything that you're going to do when you write your thesis chapters. Uh, literature view is common to all formal academic writing. So if you are reading a, a peer-reviewed journal article, if you're reading a doctoral dissertation or some kind of follow-up research, etc., it will always have a review of the literature. So it's just very, very important to be able to demonstrate uh, that you have done your homework and that you have really an excellent background sufficient to do everything you want to accomplish in your master's thesis. So I wanted to be able to stop by and just address this area of what you're doing as you go forward. I'm here, of course, to serve you, to help you in any way I can, enjoying the process. Uh, so God bless you guys. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you this coming week.